Guys, this video is going to be a little nerdy. So you can see we got the Rubicon sitting on four scales. The weight is slowly being dropped onto them by the floor jack. I've got it kind of balancing on the floor jack right now. And the purpose of this experiment is to show you guys one of the big benefits of a swing arm stretch. What's up guys? This video is going to be about the physics of a swing arm stretch. It is not going to be mathematically accurate. We're going to make a lot of assumptions. I'm not going to do any actual like math or calculus here because I know people will just stop watching as soon as I do that. But I'm going to try to explain the concepts here that make a swing arm stretch make such a big difference. It changes a lot of factors about the vehicle that add together to make a really meaningful difference in stability and things like that, especially on a short wheelbase lightweight Honda where the tires and wheels make up a lot of the weight of the machine. All right, guys, this was just a poll I did on my Facebook page, um, Mud Puppy Off-Road. I said, uh, what is the biggest benefit of a swing arm stretch on a Honda ATV? I wanted to see what the opinions were. So overwhelmingly, most people said clear bigger tires and help the angle of your drive shaft, 72%. That is absolutely accurate. That is a really, really big benefit. You get massive amount of rear tire clearance. So in general, a three inch stretch lets you clear a six inch bigger tire because of radius and diameter. So yeah, huge difference in tire clearance and also it reduces your drive shaft angle. That's really important for drive shaft reliability. If you're running the Tarachi HD shaft, not that much of a concern because those joints are so big. But what it also does is it reduces the amount of phasing in your rear drive line. So if you don't know about drive shaft phasing, um, watch a video on it. I'll link it in the description. But basically, the more angle on a drive shaft, your power delivery starts to kind of pulse. And if you don't have a second U-joint in the system to cancel out that pulsing, um, you kind of get this wah, 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 wah thing. And that's why Honda ranchers and foremans that have a lift on the rear and they don't have a stretch, that's why they feel kind of like crap and they hop and skip a lot. Um, so yeah. Drive shaft angle is huge, tire clearance is huge. Um, these are the two I added, more tire clearance in the rear and more clearance under the engine just to get it started. Those are also obviously big benefits. Um, someone said, not stretch, not pimping, okay. Allow room for dual shocks to get the fat girl home, absolutely. Um, dual shocks are kind of tricky to do on these new body style ones, but it certainly can be done. Uh, we had some funny responses down here in the comment section too, of course. The comment section is always gold. Uh, Steve Nauman has a great one here. Um, extra long jet ski sit for more, uh, more jiggliness. Um, but yeah, Garrett had a good point though. He said better at climbing out of holes with a longer wheelbase. And that's kind of what we're going to dig into in this video is why does a swing arm stretch help so much climbing out of holes and climbing up steep hills? There's a lot of different things going into this and I'm going to try to explain it. When you put big lifts and big tires on these Hondas, they want to wheelie backwards all the time. That's fine if you ride on basically flat ground and ponds and stuff. If you're trying to climb a hole, climb out of a rut, climb a hill, you got to have weight on the front tires. Otherwise, you can't steer and you're basically two-wheel drive, right? All the friction equations for tires rely on weight being sitting on the tire. If your tire is just barely touching the ground, it's not doing anything. So the stretch transfers a lot of weight forward. And that's a statics thing, right? If you're going slow, we can apply statics equations, assume that it's basically sitting still. So we're going to use these scales to show you the change in weight distribution. So I'm going to take all these measurements down. I'm going to remove my swing arm stretch brackets. Tire is going to be right up against the vessel floorboards. And we're going to see how much difference it makes. This should be pretty interesting. Um, interesting way to show you guys the change in weight distribution. And of course, we'll calculate all the percents. So you probably hear 50-50 weight distribution when they talk about race cars. That's what people want. On an ATV in the mud, especially a short wheelbase one, you want more weight on the front axle. So we're going to compare the stock weight distribution to the weight distribution with a three inch trashy stretch. Right, stretch is removed. It's back on the scales. Um, the one thing I have to account for is that I removed a couple pounds of weight from the rear end. So we will add that back in to this measurement. I'm going to weigh the brackets and the hardware. And we're just going to add that back into the rear because it's so close to the rear we can assume that the majority of that weight sits on the rear. Very small error there. But yeah, so let's go over to Excel, add everything up, and see how much we change the weight distribution. All right, guys, here are the results. I'll try to keep this as brief as possible. I know it's boring looking at a spreadsheet. So Rubicon weight distribution test. It's not a Rubicon, so typo right there already. It's a Foreman. I am so used to having Rubicons. I've had six of them. Okay, um, this is no stretch, 35s, just the bracket lift front and rear. We had a front weight of... 449 and a rear weight of 411 for a total ATV weight of 860 pounds. That might seem like a lot, but you got to remember this thing is on 35s and 20s. 20 inch wheels are quite heavy. So that gives us a weight distribution of about 42 40, or excuse me, 52 48. Not too far from 50 50. That's um, that'd be pretty decent for a, a street car. But 
like I said, you really want more weight on the front tires um, when you're trying to climb out of holes with one of these ATVs with massive tires on it. 35s are just a ridiculous size tire for an ATV, but this goes for like a true 32 or anything taller than that. Um, with the three inch stretch and the 35s and the front bracket, the weight changed. We had 470 pounds on the front wheels and 388 pounds on the rear wheels. So the difference is that we basically, um, of course there's some error here, right? We added 21 pounds to the front axles and we subtracted 23 pounds from the rear axles. Now, why is there some error here? Well, when I did this, I took the swing arm stretch brackets off the swing arm, which actually changed the weight of the ATV overall. I weighed them, they're about 10 pounds with the brackets and all the hardware and stuff. So I tried to add that in, but that's a source of error. Also, my skills aren't perfect. But the fact that the total weight was within two pounds of each other, I'm pretty happy with that. So what does all that work out to? That means with the stretch, your weight distribution is 55-45. So if you look at this, we gained 3% weight in the front and we lost 3% weight in the rear. So I think that's gonna make about a 6% difference as far as like how the rider would feel the balance. Um, certainly if you're parked in the water, um, the front end is gonna sink 3% more and the rear is going to float 3% more. So overall, that's about a 6% change in like twisting the machine. So is that super significant? No. And I'm surprised by that. I thought it'd be closer to 10%, just kind of doing the math in my head with statics. Um, but this is how it comes out. And I switched the scales around a few times and checked everything. I'm pretty sure this is accurate. So what else is going on here? Um, there's definitely more than a 6% change to the, how the ATV drives. Um, let's look at another thing, which is swing arm length. So the swing arm went from 14 to 17 inches with the stretch. That's a difference of about 21.5%. 21.5% is a much bigger number than 6%. And I can think, I think I can show how this, um, this actually makes a difference to what you feel driving the ATV better in a video. But just to try to explain it here, um, the longer your swing arm is, the less force is transferred to the frame when you're putting power down. When you're driving the rear wheels, the differential has to kind of twist the swing arm in the opposite direction the wheels are going in order to propel the vehicle, um, assuming two wheel drive in that scenario right there. But I think the swing arm difference is gonna make a bigger feel difference for the driver because the swing arm is much shorter than the wheelbase. So proportionally, it's a much bigger change. That might've been confusing. Let me show you that in a video. So I'm gonna try to explain the swing arm torque thing here. I know it's not fully assembled right now. I'm experimenting. So in order for the differential to drive the tires this way, right, there is an equal and opposite force put on all the brackets in the other direction. So when you're going forward, right, the differential is driving the tire this way, it's trying to twist the swing arm the opposite direction. That's just how force works. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So it is pushing this way on the swing arm. If you make the swing arm three inches longer, it's not applying as much force here because the swing arm has more leverage against the differential. It's a torque thing. Um, force over distance. You increase the distance, you end up with less force right here if you keep torque the same. So um, yeah, I think that'll make sense. So basically, I think those are the three main interactions. It's the torque transfer to the frame, the weight distribution, AKA the scales, and then the confusing one, which is moment of inertia. We're not gonna get into too much here, but basically the foiler is more stable from acceleration uh, because it is longer and the tires are farther apart. I hope this makes sense. Maybe it's some food for thought if you guys are doing your own mods. Because the tires and wheels make up a significant portion of the weight of a Honda ATV when you put it on big tires and wheels, moving the wheels farther apart increases the moment of inertia. Um, basically this is how much the vehicle resist twisting to make it kind of simple. Um, rotational acceleration is reduced when you increase the moment of inertia. These are the equations here that kind of govern that for a car. I'm not going to go into them in great detail. It would be really complicated to calculate for the ATV because of its weird shape and stuff. But just know that there's another factor here, um, but the wheels being farther apart, the moment of inertia is increased which means that when you stab the throttle, climb down of a hole, the vehicle doesn't want to tip backwards as quickly. So all that to say, all three of these factors add together to make the vehicle feel so much more stable. That's why the swing arm stretch is such a big deal. It's not one of these things on their own. It's that by stretching the swing arm, you're changing the vehicle's wheelbase. You're changing the lever arm of the swing arm 
and you're also changing the weight distribution. So all those things together mean the front tires stay on the ground more often, providing more traction, giving the foiler a more secure feel, and they help it pull out of holes and climb up steep grades. What's up guys, thanks for watching. If you like this kind of stuff, check out the Patreon page. That's where most of my nerdy videos end up. Of course, the swing arm stretch is available on Tarachi.com. It's really sweet. I'll have a how-to video coming out on that shortly. Um, if you have a Rubicon and you're trying to apply these kind of concepts to your Rubicon, um, it's pretty similar. The weight distribution argument applies about the same. The moment of inertia argument applies about the same if you're thinking like raked arms on a Rubicon. But the torque and the swing arm argument is not relevant. That only applies to solid axle vehicles.